Since the Arduino isn't equipped with a real-time clock, the system time is reset to zero each time the device is powered on or reset. This isn't a major concern for most projects, but it makes any sort of timekeeping or time stamp data recording application, especially a project designed to run autonomously, a lot more challenging. The clock can certainly be set once the Arduino is powered on and the application is running, but if there's a loss of power or the Arduino is reset, the system clock needs to be resynchronized. Fortunately, there are a number of solutions to the problem. For example, time via GPS, time via the internet, and using a real-time clock with a battery backup. The last two are the focus of this project. Obtaining the time from an NTP time server via the internet using an ENC 28J60 Ethernet module, and then synchronizing the Arduino and a real-time clock. Clocks are small devices or modules usually consisting of a chip, a reference crystal, and a coin cell battery for backup that provide a time reference for devices like the Arduino to synchronize to. They're generally inexpensive, although the super low cost models, for example like the one used in this project, have a reputation for keeping poor time, losing or gaining several minutes or more over a month's time. For the average hobbyist, a few minutes or seconds over a month's time isn't a major big deal. And of course, if you had an application that required more accurate time, a more expensive real-time clock would be probably advisable. Now, of course, any real-time clock itself has to be synchronized from an external source. One of the easiest ways to synchronize an RTC or an Arduino is by using the power of the Internet. Thousands of computers on the Internet worldwide serve as NTP, or Network Time Protocol, servers, providing a standardized time reference that any computer on the Internet can access and synchronize with. However, NTP access isn't limited to just full-blown computers. An Arduino connected to an Ethernet shield or module can also be used to access an NTP server, providing a simple method for synchronizing the Arduino's system clock or an RTC. The project outlined in this video uses a microchip technology ENC286J0 Ethernet module connected to the Arduino via SPI and a Dallas Semiconductor DS1307 real-time clock module connected via I2C. Connecting this project is fairly simple. The display and the Ethernet adapter are connected via SPI to the Arduino. Now I use separate SPI wires for the display and for the Ethernet. I've had strange things happen when using the two in combination, especially with a 5110, so I prefer to use separate SPI connections for each device. The real-time clock and the display are powered from 5 volts, the Ethernet adapter from 3.3 volts. There is a variable resistor installed here to control the backlighting on the display as well. The code is surprisingly simple. I really expected communicating with the NTP time server to be more complicated, but was delighted to discover that the Ethernet library includes functions to access the time server, which made it very, very easy. The program demonstrates how to use an ENC28J60 Ethernet controller to synchronize the Arduino's clock and a real-time clock module to time retrieved from an NTP time server. Certainly I could have displayed the output in the serial console from the IDE, but that's just way boring and I thought this would be more interesting. So I'll, I declare all the included libraries, one for the Ethernet adapter, uh, these two for the real-time clock, or these three for the real-time clock, and then one for the graphics library. I initialize an instance of the graphics library here. There are variables related to the Ethernet adapter, variables for holding IP and addresses, 
the MAC address of the Ethernet adapter itself, several flags that are set, and variables to hold the time. These string conversion variables are used in the conversion of the time to be displayed on the display. This is a standard title that appears at, on each screen, as well as the module status, which I've used to indicate if there's an error in initializing any of the hardware or whether the program is good to go. So the setup routine flips the display because of the orientation of my display, sets up an instance of the Ethernet adapter. If there's no errors in doing so, it then checks to see if DHCP is working by obtaining an IP address. If no error occurs there, make sure that DNS is working, and if no errors occur of any kind, sets the module status to 3, which indicates that everything's good to go. This function converts the IPs that are returned if it is successful in obtaining an IP. This subroutine does nothing more than center text on the display. This subroutine displays the title at the top of each page. This is the graphics library subroutine that displays any and all of the screens that are used in the program. If there is any error setting up the Ethernet adapter, if it fails to get an IP address from the DHCP server, if the DNS fails, if everything is successful, the IP addresses that are returned by uh, the DHCP. This screen is used while it is obtaining an IP address just to give you a little indication of what's going on and what the program does. This screen used to display the time that was set after it obtains a network time. This is the function that actually does the dirty work getting the time from the NTP server and storing it in a time variable. It does loop continuously until it gets a response from the NTP server. So it actually starts down here, sending the request out and making sure since it loops over and over until it gets a response back that it only sends one request. When it does get a response back, it clears the buffer, makes sure that the data has filled the buffer, then sets the got response flag and at which point the function returns the time as a time.h time variable. This subroutine takes the current date and time, displays it on the screen, and here's the main loop of the program. Depending on whether there were any errors or setup was successful, it will display any errors that occurred, or go ahead, set if the module status is set to 3 like I mentioned earlier, display that information about what the program does while it's waiting to get the time back from the NTP server. Once it's gotten the time back from the NTP server, it then sets the time in the Arduino, sets the time in the real-time clock, adjusts the time to offset for Eastern Standard Time, so the offset's in seconds, and also sets the function that will be used by the time library to continue to synchronize the time so that the time doesn't slip on the Arduino. After once the program does loop, once module status is larger than 4, it will continuously update the time that is displayed by calling this create time string function. That's all there is to the program. I hope that you find it of value, and if you do decide to build this project, you learn as much along the way as I did. If you found the video of value, I, as always, encourage you to like and subscribe. And until next time, have a great day.